welcome to this course on services marketing and now we will talk about module 23 so as you know that we are talking about the third section uh, of this course that is managing the customer interface and we are talking about balancing demand and productive capacity and that uh, is covered in three modules module 22 23 and 24 we have talked about module 22 now we will continue the same discussion in module 23 as well let us look at what are the things that uh, we will talk about today. So, we have talked about in the earlier model, module about the different demand and supply situations, productive capacity in the context of services, then managing capacity and uh, demand patterns. In the module 23 and 24, we will talk about managing demand. So, let us look at what uh, are the various things that we will cover in module 23. So, first we will try to familiarize with basic ways of managing demand. Then we will understand how to use marketing mix elements. So, as you would know that the marketing mix elements are the uh, price, product, place and promotion. So, how do we use that to smoothen out fluctuations in demand? The third thing is know how to use waiting lines and queuing systems to inventory demand. So, the basic problem that uh, we have been discussing about in services is that demand uh, fluctuates and it is difficult to invent a demand. But now we will try to understand that how we can use waiting lines and queuing system to inventory demand. Let us start with managing of the demand. Now, there are various approaches to managing this demand. The first is that you take no action and leave demand to find its own levels. So, you are not doing anything and let the demand increase and decrease and, and let the thing happen. But uh, we also understand that there are problems in that approach because when the demand uh, is low, you are wasting resources. When the demand is high and you are not able to capitalize on that, that you are wasting uh, the business. The second is, the second approach to managing demand is to use of marketing mix elements. So, we can reduce demand during peak periods by the use of marketing mix elements and we can also increase demand during low periods again by using the marketing mix elements and we will talk about these two things in greater de detail later on. The third thing is to inventory demand using a queuing system and then we also invent a demand using a reservation system. So, first thing is that you do not do anything, the second is then you use marketing elements to increase and decrease demand as the situation may be, the third is to invent a demand using queuing system and the fourth is to invent a demand using a reservation system. Now, let us start with the first one, take no action and leave demand to find its own levels. So, customers learn from experience or word of mouth when they can expect to stand in line to use the service and when it will be available without delay. So, without, so customers they learn and they also get to know from uh, word of mouth that when it will be overcrowded and when uh, when it, it will be undercrowded, so, where, so they decide when to go. The second approach is to use, is the use of marketing mix element to smoothen out demand. So, marketing mix variables have roles to play in stimulating demand during periods of excess capacity and in decreasing of shifting demand during periods of insufficient capacity. Price often is the first variable to be proposed for bringing demand and supply into balance. So, one, one P that is price is important in increasing and decreasing the demand. Obviously, when the demand increase, when, when it is uh, demand is supposed to increase, you increase the price. So, the demand will come down during the periods of weak demand, you reduce the price and the demand uh, will go up to a certain extent. But changes in product, distribution strategy and communication efforts they also have an important role to smoothen out demand. A smoothen out demand is to reduce demand during the peak periods and to increase demand during weak periods. So, the first approach here is use of price and non-monetary cost. So, pricing is one of the most direct ways of balancing the demand and supply as I have uh, just uh, talked about. The lure of cheap price and an expectation of no waiting may encourage at least some people, maybe not all of them, but some, some of them to change the timing of their behavior. Whether it is for shopping, travel and spending in equipment for repairs. 
so for example we, we people may go uh, go on on travel or for uh, do leisure travel during off peak periods so that reduces the demand for but managers must understand how quantity of service demanded responds to increase or decrease in price per unit at a particular point in time so when you increase the price during peak period then will, will the demand uh, re reduce and how much it will reduce if you reduce the price during weak period weak demand periods then will the demand increase and how much so that is important to understand uh, for managers to understand moreover separate demand curve exist for different segments within each time period as we will talk about in the next slide so you see that the demand curves will be different for different segments within uh, each time period so now look at this this is a graph for hotel room demand curves by segments and season so uh, we have used two variables segments and season on the x axis we have the quantity of rooms demanded at, at each price by travelers in each segment in each season and on the y axis we have price per room night so uh, let us start with t1 that is tourist in low season so this blue it represents this uh, demand supply uh, curve so the quantity demanded so now this is what so when the prices are reduced this may be the this may be the quantity demanded but as you see that the price increases at this point so the quantity demanded it comes down the next is let us talk about th that is tourist in high season so this uh, this tourist in high season is represented by the green curve again you see that in high season if the price is here the quantity demanded is this and obviously when when the when the when the prices are reduced the quantity demanded uh, demand demands change but you see that uh, that the rate of change in all these graphs is different now let us move on to the third graph that is b1 business travelers in low season that is represented in in red now you see that it is it is uh, it is approximately a similar line that is the price increase or decrease it is not increasing or decreasing the quantity of room demanded similarly look at the fourth graph that is uh, uh, in gray that is bh that is business that is business travelers in high season so again in high season still it is a uh, it is a plain simple straight line that it means that the price of the room does not have a, a significant influence on that on the demand of the room now let us look at what is the role of non monetary cost so non monetary cost too may have a similar effect so there we were, uh, earlier we were talking about the monetary cost now we are talking of the non monetary cost for instance if customers learn that they are likely to face increased time and efforts during peak periods so they will have to wait a long period of time there is no parking space and so on and so forth so those who dislike spending time waiting in crowded and unpleasant conditions will try to be, to come during less busy times so but then another way uh, of uh, for the same is and for and also to make company earn more more money is that you you increase the price during this period so the people who are coming here they will pay more the second way of uh, smoothing out this demand is to change the product elements another way to manage demand is through product variations some restaurant provides a good example of this marking the passage of hours with changing menu and level of service variation in lighting and decor opening and closing of bar and presence presence or absence of entertainment the goal is to appeal to different needs within the same group of customers to reach out to different customer segments or to do both according to the time of the day the third thing that can be done is to modify place and time of delivery so there are the following basic options that are available the first is that is c1 no change regardless of the level of demand the service continues to be offered in the same location at the same time so you do not take any action and uh, irrespective of the type of the level of demand the same services uh, services is offered at the same location at the and at the same time another is that is c2 
वेरिंग द टाइम्स वेन द सर्विस इज अवेलेबल सो कैफेज एंड रेस्टोर में ओपन लेट ड्यूरिंग समर्स शॉप्स में एक्सटेंड देयर आर्स इन द लीड अप टू फेस्टिवल्स सो यू विल फाइंड दैट ऑन दिवाली ऑन दिवाली एंड दशहरा द शॉप्स आर ओपन फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड सिमिलरली ड्यूरिंग ड्यूरिंग समर्स एंड ड्यूरिंग वकेशन द कैफेज एंड रेस्टोर में भी ओपन फॉर मोर अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम सी थ्री इज ऑफरिंग द सर्विस टू कस्टमर्स एट अ न्यू लोकेशन सो ऑपरेट मोबाइल यूनिट्स दैट टेक द सर्विस टू कस्टमर्स rather than requiring them to visit fixed site service location so now there are there are uh, mobile units and they units they move around the city and they go to the customers rather than coming uh, customers coming coming to the service location because that will choke the service location there will be huge crowd so for example traveling libraries mobile car wash and home delivered meals and opening branch offices in new location the next thing that can be done is is promotion and education even if other variables of the marketing mix remains unchanged communication efforts alone may be able to smooth out the demand so just by communicating about the crowding etc to the customers that can that can uh, smooth out demand to a certain extent signage advertising publicity and sales messages can be used to educate customers about the timing of peak period and encourage them to avail themselves of the service at off peak pe- times when there will be few de- uh, fewer delays so what uh, co- companies can uh, can do is to tell the customers that they if they come between 8 to 10 for dinner then obviously there will be delays and they will have to wait while if they come before 8 or between 7 to 8 then uh, the the delays will come down so for example us postal service request to mail early for christmas so the uh, us postal services they request uh, customers to mail uh, mail early for christmas because as you move or as we move towards christmas the uh, the, the load increases so the, because the increase in load the delivery time also increases so maybe you are sending a gift to someone to be delivered before christmas and it is delivered after christmas so that loses the importance of the of the gift that you have sent so moreover changes in pricing product characteristics and distribution may be communicated clearly to the customer now let us look at the alter- alternative demand management strategies for different capacity situation so this is the table that that shows on the on the left hand side we are uh, we have approaches in managing demand and there are two approaches uh, here and then the first is to take no action and the second is to manage demand through marketing mix element now as we move towards the capacity situation so there can be two two options insufficient capacity that is excess demand and there can be insufficient demand that is excess capacity so when there is excess capacity that is insufficient capacity so when there is excess demand that is insufficient capacity and then and if we are taking no action then what happens so it results in unorganized queuing and it irritate customers and discourage future users when we are talking of excess demand that is insufficient capacity and when we want to manage demand through marketing mix elements then what happens so it reduces demand in the peak period higher prices will increase the profit so that is one change product elements don't offer time consuming services during peak times so that is the second thing the third thing is modified time and place of delivery that is extended opening hours the fourth one is communication can encourage use in other time slots and can this effort be focused on less profitable and less desirable segments that is the fourth one and the last one is is the note that demand from highly profitable segments should still be stimulated and priority to capacity should be given to those segments demand reduction and shifting uh, should primarily be focused on lower yield segment so this is the fifth one and this is an important part that the demand reduction and shifting from peak to non peak should be focused on lower yield segments and for higher yield yield segment means that those customer who are more profitable so their demand should uh, should not be shifted now let us move on to the next next situation when it there is insufficient demand that is you have more capacity excess capacity 
So, when you have excess capacity and the, and the option is that you take no action, then what happens? The capacity is wasted. Customers may have a disappointing ex experience for services such as a theatre. So, you have a 100 uh, th or a 1000 sitting capacity in a theatre and only 100 or 200 people or 500 people are sitting. So, that gives a bad impression to the customers that the theatre is empty. Now, the second option here is when you manage demand through marketing mix element, then what happens? So, increase demand in low periods, low prices selectively, lower prices selectively, try to avoid cannibalizing existing businesses, ensure that all relevant costs are covered. So, that is the first option. The second option is change product elements, find alternative value propositions for services during low season. And the third is use communications and variations in product and distribution, but keep in mind the extra cost if any and make sure that appropriate trade offs are made more profitably and use levels. Now, we are talking about inventory demand through waiting lines and queuing system. So, what, what needs to be done? Let us look at how to invent a demand using a queuing system. So, queuing are waiting lines. So, this can be achieved in two ways. The first is by asking customers to wait in line usually on a first come first serve basis or by offering customers more advanced queuing systems. So, the first option is that customers will come and they wait in a queue. The second is by offering customers the opportunity of reserving or booking a seating capacity in advance. So, one thing is that you go to a theatre and, and stand there in line and buy a ticket. Another is that you, uh, you book online and then you, uh, then you go and go to the theatre. Now, this waiting is a universal phenomena. It happens everywhere across the world. So, an average person may spend up to 30 minutes a day waiting in line equivalent to over one week per year. So, you, now you see that one week is going waste just because we have to wait. And nobody likes to wait. It is boring time wasting and sometimes physically uncomfortable that you, you are standing there. Physical and inanimate objects wait for processing too. So, your cars may be in line for, uh, for car wash uh, and, uh, and your clothes may be in line for dry cleaning. So, customers emails sit in customer service staff's inboxes. So, when we send emails, they may be there in the inboxes and the person are not, uh, is not reading it. Appliances wait to be repaired and checks wait to be cleared at the bank. So, this happens across across the board, across the world, whether for human or for objects. So, in each of the above instance, a customer may be waiting for the outcome of what works, an answer to an email, an appliance that is working again and a check credited to the customer's balance. But the question is why do waiting lines occur? A number of arrivals at a facility exceeds capacity of systems to process them at a specific point in the process. So, when the demand is more than the capacity, then obviously the waiting line, the waiting happens. Queues are basically a symptom of unresolved capacity management problem. Not all queues take form of a physical waiting line in a single location. So, queues may be physical, but geographically dispersed. So, for example, across the country people are, are, are reserving uh, a seat on, on a train through IRCTC. So, lots of people may be, may be wanting to go, go from, uh, from Bombay to Delhi and they may be reserving the seat from anywhere across the country. So, queues may be physical, but geographically dis, uh, dispersed. For example, tra travelers wait at many different locations. For the taxis, they have ordered by phone to arrive and pick them up. So, some are virtual for example, phone. So, we, we keep on calling, calling and then the call center says that the uh, customer care executive is busy and therefore, you have to wait. So, how do we go about managing waiting lines? The problem of reducing customer waiting time often requires a multi-pronged strategy. So, there is no, no one, is one thing that needs to be done. Increasing capacity simply by adding more space or more staff is not always the optimal solution. In situations in which customer satisfaction may be balanced against cost consideration. So, as the because if you are adding more, more space and more staff then the cost will go up. 
but then in those kind of situation cost is very important for the customers and it will affect customer satisfaction so you cannot increase the space or the staff because that will reduce the customer satisfaction so what to do in those kind of situations so managers may consider a variety of ways for managing waiting lines including first rethinking design of queuing system so queuing configurations and virtual waits instead of waiting there in the physical line tailoring queuing system to different market segments tailoring queuing system to different market segments by urgency price or important importance of customers so there is one line for uh, for uh, for a special kind of customers those who have paid more for those uh, those patients who have come for in emergency so they are paying more and then there there is another line that is of the normal customers the third is managing customers behavior and their perception of weight so now we are what, what we are doing is is to uh, is to manage customers behavior and their perceptions of weight use the psychology of waiting to make weights less unpleasant so wait waiting and waits will always be unpleasant but then now we will use psychology to make these these waits less unpleasant the fourth thing that can be done is installing a reservation system so use reservations booking or appointment to distribute demand so people uh, can sit at their home and then they make, they can make reservation and come uh, near about the time when their reservation is scheduled and the fifth is redesigning processes to shorten the time taken in each transaction by installing self service machines so the job that is done by human is shifted to the self service technology so that the process get uh, get redesigned and the time taken to deliver a service is reduced so that will obviously reduce the waiting time of in the queue now let us look at the different queuing configurations so there are a variety of different types of queues and the challenge for manager is to select the most appropriate procedures so there are various combinations but it is for the managers to choose which is uh, which is good enough for them so the first is single line sequential stages customers proceed through several serving options as in cafeteria bottlenecks may occur at any stage where the process takes longer to execute them at the previous stage so at one station the time taken to serve is lesser as compared to uh, uh, the subsequent station so at that station the uh, uh, the waiting line happens so many cafeteria have lines at the cash counter because the cashier takes longer than the servers to slap food on uh, on your table the second is parallel lines to multiple servers offer more than one serving station allowing customers to select one of the several lines in which to wait however lines may not move at equal speeds banks and ticket windows are common examples and similar things happen at the airports also during your security checks etc so there are multiple lines but then there are different speed of those lines the third is a single line to multiple server so commonly called a snake that is again what happens at the airport so uh, solve the, it solves the problem of the parallel lines to multiple servers moving at different spe speeds so they are used as post office uh, post offices and airport check-ins the fourth one is designated lines involve assigning different lines to specific category of customers examples include express lines and regular lines at supermarket checkouts and the fifth option is to take a number it saves the customers the need to stand in a queue because they know they will be called in a sequence depending upon their number so this procedure allows them to sit and relax users of this approach include large travel agents government offices and outpatient clinics in hospitals and the sixth is wait list restaurant often have wait list where people put their name down and wait until their name is announced so there is a there, there is a page and people come and and put down their names and then the uh, and then the restaurant announces the name and people come in and so therefore you you know that uh, how much time it will take for you uh, you to be called so there are four common ways of wait listing the first is party size sitting vip sitting call ahead sitting which allows people to telephone before arrival to hold a place on the wait list and large party reservations now let us look at the different queuing configuration in the first is a single line 
a single server and, and a single stage. So, you, you see that they are moving in this, this direction. In the second is there is a single line and a single ser server at sequential stage. So, a person comes here, he gets something and then he moves on to the next server uh, to, uh, and, and then to the next, ne next multiple lines to multiple servers. So, this is what generally happens at the airport. So, you have uh, you, you are taking a boarding pass. So, there are multiple servers and there are different queues. Then there are designated lines to designated servers. So, there are four, uh, four lines. So, a person is through with this and then he comes to this line. When he is through with this, he, he comes to this one and so on so forth. The fourth one is single line to multiple servers that is snake. So, there are multiple lines that as you have seen the, on the security counters and they, they keep on going to for, uh, for security checks in this. Take a number that is single or multiple servers. So, now you have uh, you have numbers and then you can be called for called by various doctors in an, in an OPD. Then there are virtual weights. Customers register their place in a line on a terminal. Terminal estimates the time customer will reach front of a virtual line for them to return and claim their place. Innovative ways of taking the physical waiting out of the wait altogether. For example, Sushi Thai restaurant have a self-service touch screen for diners to register. They will receive a call 5 minutes before their table is available. So, you go and register and then you put in there your mobile numbers etcetera and they will call you when your turn comes. Use of virtual waits in a call center. So, the first in first out queuing system is commonly called in call centers. So, when callers call in, when their call is gets through, they hear a message that informs them of the estimated wait time for the call to be taken by the agent. So, they say that the, the agents are busy. So, the caller can wait in the queue and get connected to an agent when his or her term, turn arrives or choose to receive a call back, but his or her virtual place in the queue is maintained. Cruise ships, all inclusive resorts can use this strategy if customers are willing to provide their cell numbers or remain within buzzing area of a firm operator pager system. So, that happens on the airport restaurants also. So, you go there and they will give you a, a pager and when your turn comes, uh, the, the pager, pager will ring and then you can go and pick up your order. To conclude, in this module, we learnt about ways to managing demand including how this marketing mix elements the, the product price place and promotion can be used to smoothen out demand. Next we elaborated on the application of waiting lines and queuing system to inventory demand. So, these are the two important things that we have talked about in this module and these are the three books from which the, the material for these, uh, this module was, uh, was taken. Thank you.